Gaming Tabletop Gamers, my name is Luna Man. Welcome back to Luna Man Games. Today I'm going to teach you how to play the 2 to 5 player cooperative game Forbidden Desert by Matt Leacock and published by GameRight. In Forbidden Desert, everybody is a team of adventurers sent on a mission to find an ancient city containing a legendary flying machine said to be powered by the sun. But just before you got there, a mysterious sandstorm forced your helicopter to crash into the desert. And now, stranded there, your only way to survive is to work together to quickly excavate the city, find all the parts of the machine, and get back into the sky. But it's not going to be easy because the desert is trying to end you. If so much as one of you succumbs to thirst, or if the storm gets too high, or if you're buried in the sand, all of you lose the game. Let's get to the table and let's see what's in the box. To set up the game, you're going to have to set up the desert. The desert is made up of these tiles here, each of them having a photo of the desert on one side and a photo of part of the city on the other side. Now the desert tiles are mostly the same, except that there are a couple, three to be exact, that have these oasis sides on them. However, one of them is a mirage, so that is something to keep in mind. And there's also one spot right up here that is containing the helicopter crash. And that is where all the players are going to start. To set it up, you're going to shuffle the tiles together and then arrange them in a five by five square and there is going to be one left. Make sure you leave the center empty because that represents the eye of the storm. Just to let you know, you don't have to set it up in the way I set it up here. You actually shuffle the tiles and you do lay them out randomly. And this is just the way that I ended up laying them out. Also, when setting up the tiles, make sure every one of them is facing the same way. With the red arrow on this compass here facing upward. Next, you're going to take these sand tiles here and you're going to lay eight of them out on the board in a diamond shape like I've done here. Make sure they are in this shape. You do not place these sand tiles in any other way. And when you're placing the sand markers, make sure you do not place them with this X side facing upward. That is not necessary yet. Make sure you place them with this light side facing up. Next, you're going to set up the storm level. There's this meter right over here, which has a clip on it that does come off, so be careful with it. And this is going to represent the level of the storm. It's also going to help you determine how hard the game is going to be. So what you're going to do is determine how many players are in the game, flip the gauge over to determine which side of the player markers that are included. For example, I'm setting up for a four player game, so I'm using this track. Then take the little marker here and place it on the level that you want. I'm setting up to be the hardest level possible, so I'm placing it on the legendary difficulty. Now, if you want an easier game, you can bring this downward to novice, normal, or elite. But I'm, like I said, I'm setting this up to be hard as possible, so I'm doing it as legendary. Now, normally, after you've decided what level you're going, you're supposed to take the meter and put it in this holder, but to make it easier for you to see in this tutorial, I'm just going to put it out here on the table. Next, you need to set up the ship. There is this ship included with the game, and this is the ship that the players are going to be working together to try to build. The ship comes with four separate pieces. These are the parts that you're trying to collect. The compass, the propeller, the sundial thing, I'm not actually sure what this is, and the engine. For now, just set these all aside and make sure they're not on the ship. They will be important later. Next, you need to set up the cards. First is the storm deck. Make sure you shuffle the storm deck and you place it face down above the desert with the, the arrow at the compass facing away from the board. This is to symbolize that this direction is north. This deck here is the gear deck. This deck contains items that the players can collect over the course of the game that will help them achieve their goal. Simply just shuffle this up and place it off to the side. It doesn't really matter 
where it is as long as it's not on the board. Next you need to give each player in the game a roll. There's a small deck of six roll cards included with the game. Each of these roll cards has at least one special ability on it that they can use on their turn in a canteen that represents how much water they have. During setup you're going to shuffle this and give one to each player. Each player is then going to take their little marker right here, the slide marker, and they're going to place it at the highest level of their canteen. When you get your roll, make sure you get the matching color pawn that matches the color of your roll and make sure all of them are at the helicopter crash site. You are ready to begin. Starting with the thirstiest player, each player is going to go around doing two things in this order. You are going to take up to four actions and then you're going to draw storm cards up here equal to the current storm level. Notice I said take up to four actions and that's because you don't have to take all four actions if you don't want to. You can choose even to take no actions if you wanted to although it's highly recommended that you take actions. There are four things you can do that count as an action and you can do any combination of these four. The first one you can take your pawn and move it to an adjacent tile, either horizontally or vertically. An important thing to note is that when you move, you have to move to an unblocked tile. A tile is considered blocked when there are at least two or more sand tiles on that tile. To signify that the tile is blocked, you take the top tile and flip it over to show this darker X. You would have that on top of the sand stack. Now remember, it's only when there are two or more that it's considered blocked. One sand tile on it is still okay. There are also three of these tunnel tiles, and you'll know it's a tunnel because it has this tunnel icon in the corner. If there are at least two of these showing, you can move between the two tunnels for one of your move actions. You are absolutely forbidden from moving into or through the empty space that contains the storm. Not that you'd want to even move into the storm anyway. The next action you can do is remove sand. If there are sand tiles either on your tile or next to your tile, you can spend one action to remove one of those sand tiles. Removing sand tiles is just like moving. They have to be done either vertically or horizontally. You cannot remove sand in the tiles diagonal of you. The next thing is to excavate. To excavate a tile, you need to be on a desert side of a tile that has no sand on it. If you are, you can spend one action to excavate that tile. Basically, you take the tile, you flip it over so that the city side is showing. Make sure any icons that are on the tile are always in the bottom right corner when you put the tile back down. When you excavate a tile that has this symbol in the bottom right corner, you found some gear. You take the top card of the gear deck, you flip it over to reveal that gear that you've just gotten, and you place it up in front of you. This is now a free action that you can do at any time. If you choose to use the gear, you basically do the ability that is on it, and then you discard it. To save time, I'm going to briefly go over what each one does. The Doom Blaster lets you get rid of all the sand on a tile. The Time Throttle gives you more actions. The Terrascope lets you look at a tile. The Jetpack lets you fly anywhere. The Solar Shield protects you from the sun. And the Secret Water Reserve gives everybody on your tile two more water. If you excavate a tile that has one of the parts on it and a set of arrows, then that means you found a clue as to where that particular part is going to be. For example, this tile here says that the compass is going to be somewhere in this column. Now you won't know where exactly the part you're looking for is until you find the other tile that tells you it, where the row is going to be. For example, this tells me that the compass is going to be in this row. When you manage to find both sets of tiles that belong to that part, wherever the two tiles intersect, is where the part is going to be. For example, this one says the compass is going to be in this column. This one says that the compass is going to be in this row. The two tiles intersect right here. That means that that tile has the compass on it. 
There's also three tiles that have water droplets on them. Two of these three tiles, if you flip them over, will have a well underneath. If you excavate a water tile that has a well underneath, every player that is on that tile will get two water into their canteens. However, one of them, like I said earlier, is a mirage. This one in particular. And if you reveal an oasis tile and it's a mirage, then nobody gets anything. If you excavate a tile that has a tunnel on it, not only do you get a piece of gear, like I said before, but also any players that are in the tunnel will be protected from the sun. I'll explain that more later. If you excavate a tile and you find this, then you have found the launch pad, which is important because you need to get here once you found all four pieces in order to rebuild the ship and to win. The last thing you can do that counts as an action is to pick up a part. When you're on a tile that has the part on it and it's excavated and not blocked, then you are allowed to spend an action to claim that part. Basically, you spend an action, you take the part, and you place it in front of you. You have now collected that part of the ship. Remember, if you found one of the pieces, but it's on an unexcavated tile, you have to excavate the tile first before you can claim the piece. In addition to the actions that I've stated, there are two things you can do that don't count as actions. The first one is that if you are on the same tile as another player, you can choose to give one of your equipment cards to them. The other one is if you are on the same tile of one player or even multiple players, then you are allowed to give water to them. To give water, the player giving water has to reduce the amount on their canteen however many drops that they are giving. The players receiving water will then take their markers and raise them by the same amount. Once you finish taking all your actions, you are then going to draw cards from the storm deck equal to the current storm level. For example, the current storm level in this setting is 3, so the player will draw 3 storm cards. If you draw a card that looks like this, you will move however many tiles are on the card that direction toward the hole. For example, this card tells you to move one tile to the left into the hole. Any player markers, sand markers, or machine parts on the tiles are moved with the tile if it has to move. If you draw a sun beats down card, each player that is not in a tunnel or under a solar shield will lose one water. If you draw a storm picks up, then the storm is intensifying. That means you need to take the storm meter and move the marker up one mark. If you ever move the storm marker into a new spot, that means you need to start drawing that many storm cards starting next turn. If you've run out of cards to draw, simply shuffle the discard pile to form a new draw deck. Once the player has taken all their actions and drawn all the storm cards, the next player going clockwise will go. The game ends in one of four ways. If one player's canteen has reached down to the skull and crossbones, that player has succumbed to thirst and the whole team loses. If the storm track reaches all the way up to the skull and crossbones, the storm has become so intense that everyone's been blown away and you lose. If you have to place a sand tile out there, but there aren't any left, then your team has been buried in the sand and you lose. The only way to win is to get all four pieces of the ship and get everybody to the launch pad. If you can do both of those, then you win the game. And that is everything you need to know in order to play Forbidden Desert. As always, if you have any questions at all, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will get to them. Thank you all as always so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. That means a lot to me. If you like what I do and you want to support me in the future, please feel free to hit subscribe. And I will see you all in the next video. But until next time, see you later!